Hello, I'm Curtis Dykstra, Parks Naturalist with the Ottawa County Parks Nature Center at Hemlock Crossing County Park. Thanks for tuning in. Today we'll be entering the world of the whippoorwill. I'm sure this whistler of the night is unfamiliar to many of you, so let's shed some light on this bird of moonlit forests. First, I'll be telling you a bit about whippoorwills and what makes them so unique. Then, we'll be exploring their habitat here at Port Sheldon Natural Area during daylight hours. Last, We'll be coming back at night to look for them and hear them sing. Come join me as we explore together. To understand this bird a bit better, let's start with its name. Whippoorwill is actually onomatopoetic for the song it sings at night. That means the name resembles the sound it makes. Let's take a listen. Do you hear it saying, whip or will, repeatedly? Other Native American names for this bird are similar, such as Waguli in the Cherokee language and Whipolis for the Malasite people. Henry Thoreau described it as the voice with which the woods and moonlight woo me. However, ornithologist Alexander Wilson, when he gave the bird its Latin scientific name, seems not to have taken such a sentimental bent on the whippoorwill's song. The genus name Antrostomus is derived from antro meaning cave and stomus meaning mouth, while the species name vociferous refers to the Latin vox for voice and which in English means boisterous speech. Altogether it quite literally translates as cave mouth bird that compels attention by being loud and insistent. Whippoorwills belong to the family Capromulgidae, otherwise referred to as the goat suckers. This name refers to a superstition dating back well over 2,000 years, as documented by Aristotle himself, that these birds would steal milk from goats by suckling on them at night. This superstition likely has roots in the birds' extremely large mouths and rather mysterious and misunderstood nocturnal habits. The whippoorwill is extremely camouflaged and is rarely seen during the day when it tends to hide by blending in when it roosts on dead branches like this or in the leaf litter on the forest floor. Whippoorwills are about 10 inches long, similar in length to a cardinal. However, they seem a lot larger. That's because the wings of a whippoorwill are much wider giving them a wingspan of 18 to 19 inches. That's up to nine inches wider than a cardinal's wingspan. This wide wingspan helps them silently fly at night as they flitter about and catch insects on the wing. Whippoorwills range in winter from Florida and along the Gulf Coast down into Central America. During the breeding months in spring and summer, they range across the eastern U.S. and southern Canada. This graphic from eBird illustrates their movements through the season and their densities in different parts of their range. Notice the higher density areas at the height of the breeding season in early June. In particular, look at northern Michigan and the thin strip southward along the Lake Michigan coastline where we're located. Let's take a walk a little deeper into whippoorwill habitat. Whippoorwills are found in large tracts of mature, deciduous, and mixed forests with open understory, containing little undergrowth. However, they also prefer thick forested areas with intermittent clearings where they can forage at night. This type of habitat continues to diminish, as does this bird's population, by as much as 75% in North America since 1966. Looking at Michigan, Notice the difference between the breeding bird surveys done in the 1980s versus in the 2000s, particularly in the southern half of the state. Causes for this decline include conversion of forests for suburban housing and farming, as well as a lack of open understory forest due to suppression of naturally occurring fires. 
In 2009, Ottawa County Parks began managing areas of cultivated red pine plantations within the deciduous forest system by thinning them in an effort to encourage the regrowth of a more diverse deciduous forest. This process has opened up gaps within the forest that have readily been utilized by whippoorwills. Other species dependent on these gaps, such as the chestnut-sided warbler, and the black-billed cuckoo, have also benefited. As I noted earlier, these gaps in the forest are important feeding areas for whippoorwills at night. That's because they have more light and attract more insects for these birds to feed on. Using their large nocturnally adapted eyes to see well in the low light and their flittery but agile silent flight, they seek out moths and other flying insects to eat in these forest gaps. To catch their prey, they utilize their long whiskers to help funnel the insects into their gaping mouths. They don't have keen hearing like owls or echolocation like bats, so they prefer moonlit nights to actively feed. They also use dusk and dawn. For nesting, female whippoorwills choose a spot in the leaf litter on the forest floor and without building a nest, lay two eggs directly on the ground. They time egg laying with a full moon. This ensures that in 20 days when the chicks hatch, the moon cycle will be waxing again with only 10 days left till another full moon. That helps provide a maximum number of days in a row with moonlight to allow the extra foraging necessary to meet the demands of their new chicks as well as themselves. Fledging occurs when the chicks are about three weeks old. All the while, parents need to remain vigilant for predators such as raccoons, skunks, and snakes. They rely on their camouflage for protection, but also can perform a distraction display where they feign a broken wing to lead potential predators away from the nest. Thanks for coming along with me into Whippoorwill Habitat during daylight hours. Keep watching as I'll be coming back later tonight in hopes that I can actually find a whippoorwill and hear it sing. I'm back out here at Port Sheldon Natural Area on a calm, clear evening as the sun is setting. There's nearly a full moon in the skies and so the conditions should be just right for us to go look for and listen to whippoorwills. Let's see if we can find one. I've made it back out to the gap in the forest that I showed you earlier. Now we've just got to wait and see what happens. While we're waiting, I'm enjoying listening to some of the other woodland birds singing as the day ends. A veery singing the flute-like descending song in the distance, and also a tohi going tohi. Is a catbird meowing. The veery is a thrush, kind of like a robin, only smaller. You can also hear it doing its call note, beer. There it was again. Now I hear the wood thrushes doing a wit, 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 wit. So cardinal singing in the background too. A whippoorwill just started singing. 
that direction. A second now, off in this direction. They're singing that song as a territorial boundary maker. I'm sure that this male over here and this male over here are battling it out and saying where the line is drawn between their two territories. I've been listening to this whippoorwill sing for a while and have identified about three different locations that it's singing from. I'm going to see if I can go and find it singing from its post. trickster was right here and he disappeared and now he's singing from way over there I would call that a successful evening, looking for whippoorwills. Hard to leave this serenade, but it is time for me to get home and get to bed. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed joining me on this virtual whistle of the whippoorwill walk. Maybe now you're wondering where you could go to observe whippoorwills. Here are some suggestions of Ottawa County Parks to visit where you could encounter them. Time your visit at sunset on a calm evening. And remember, the more moonlight, the better. Then, just quietly listen and enjoy the experience, whatever the outcome. If you'd like to find out more about Ottawa County Parks, you can visit us at miottawa dot org slash parks. You'll find information on all 40 park properties, the Nature Center, and our programming as well as other online educational resources. You can also visit us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Ottawa County Parks. Come join us again soon and don't forget to share this video with a friend.